Hi guys, welcome back to Biohacked. I'm Amanda. And I'm Nadim. Today's episode is all about homeopathy. Before we begin today, let's talk about last week's episode, cryotherapy. It was awesome. Yes. Yeah. So if you haven't done so, make sure you check it out up on our YouTube channel right now. How was that episode for you? It was really invigorating, honestly, when I came out of the, the pod or the tank or whatever it's called. Right. Right. I felt super energized. Right. My skin was just like, I don't know, it was kind of like glowing, it felt like. And right. uh, I don't know, I just felt really good for the rest of the evening. So if you, if you could do cryo in a week, how many times would you do cryotherapy? Oh, I do it every day, for sure. Every day? Every day, yeah, yeah. Right when I wake up. I was trained as a constitutional homeopath. What this means that when treating a patient, I have to take the full symptom picture, which includes the totality of symptoms. The areas that we have to look at are the psychological, the emotional, the physical, and the hereditary information of the patient, which is also known as a miasm. To take the case of a patient in homeopathy requires taking symptoms in all four above areas. This usually takes about one to one and a half hour in an appointment and requires a lot of critical thinking and an extremely vigilant note taker in a practitioner. Homeopathy is a system of medicine that was developed by the German physician, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann in 1796. It uses natural remedies made of plants, minerals, and animal sources to stimulate the vital force, also known as the chi of a person, to produce healing reactions. In homeopathy, the totality of all the patient's symptoms are all important. Homeopathy is based on the law of similars, that substances that cause healthy people to become ill, when fed back to them in potentized amounts or versions, can in fact stimulate these very sick people to become cured or healed a theory that has been later employed in modern day vaccination. The story behind homeopathy is that Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, the founder of homeopathy, traveled to South America to ingest the chinchona bark, which being a source of quinine was used to treat malaria at the time. Upon ingestion, he discovered the symptoms of fever, throbbing head, great thirst, all symptoms of malaria. The chinchona bark had produced these symptoms in him upon ingestion. He did not have malaria, so they had produced the symptoms in a perfectly healthy person. Hahnemann then decided that the bark's medicinal power to cure the disease came from its ability to produce similar symptoms of the disease itself in a healthy human being. Take for example Rustox, a very common and popular homeopathic remedy that is made from poison ivy. When you're in contact with poison ivy, the symptoms that will appear would be muscle stiffness, capriciousness of the mental state, and desire to constantly move about because of itchiness. When taken in homeopathic doses, Rustox as a homeopathic remedy can resolve the symptoms of muscle stiffness, fever, itchiness, and capriciousness in the mental state. Homeopathy is energetic medicine. The remedies are made from very high dilutions. They are highly energetic, but yet they are capable of inducing or triggering a tremendous healing response from the patient's body. In order to work, the remedies must fit the symptom picture in all totality for the patient. There is a process by which a homeopath will take the case, repertorize the case, read the materia medica, produce the remedy and tailor the dosages to the individual. It is a very sophisticated process that requires over four years of learning and training. So many people don't know this, but homeopathy and conventional medicine, as we know it today, have always existed side by side in principles and history. Hippocrates, who is the most famous physician of ancient Greece, first used the term miasm. Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, the founder of homeopathy, later expanded on the term miasm and discovered that it was a noxious agent originating from chronic parasitic microorganisms or germs that was responsible for diseases. He named this miasm, which happens to be also the top five incurable diseases in our lifetime. The five miasms are Sora, which represents chronic diseases and skin diseases, psychotic, which represents sexual and urinary diseases, syphilinum, which represents diseases of the nervous system, the blood, the skeleton, and psychological disorders, tuberculinum, 
which represents inflammation of glands and tonsils and is a combination of sora and syphilis. And lastly, cancer, which is a combination of all miasms. The best way to find out what remedy is the best one for you is to see a trained homeopath. Here in Ontario, homeopathy is a regulated profession, so you can Google OHA, which is the Ontario Homeopathic Association, and on that website you will find a list of qualified and trained homeopaths. I always recommend seeing a classical homeopath over self-prescribing because if you don't match your symptom picture perfectly to the remedy and hit your similimum, most people will walk away from the situation saying homeopathy doesn't work. A homeopath is precisely trained to take your symptom picture, repertize, and then produce the best suited remedy for your condition. So, we're actually going to demonstrate how to take your homeopathic remedy just because a lot of times I find that a lot of people don't know the proper way. So we're looking at Arnica Montana because Nadim actually works out quite a bit. So there's always sort of muscle stiffness um, happening. So first you take the, the bottle itself and then you twist the cap. And the key is to dispense three pellets. Once you've dispensed it, you keep it in the cap, don't put it in your hand because the remedy is actually sprayed onto the sugar pellets. And what happens is when you put it into your hand, it erases the remedy. And then you transfer it directly under your tongue. Let it go sublingually and hold it there either until it melts or you've given it at least maybe about two minutes and then you can chew it up. So no food or water 15 minutes before or after taking your remedy. In homeopathy, less is more. So as soon as you start to feel better, stop. As the remedy can produce a proving of the substance. Which, what this means is technically, the symptoms could come back and you might start to feel as though you're getting worse. But actually what you're doing is you're proving the remedy. So it is very important for you to stop as soon as you start feeling better. We can use homeopathy from everything from allergic reactions to muscular strains and pains, food poisoning, antidoting caffeine, helping with broken bones, and for sleep. It's perfect for a biohacker as you can carry it on the go and it's super easy to take. Homeopathy is toxin and drug free. It's non-drowsy and can be taken anytime. Renowned for use by the royal family as it does not change the biological makeup of the body, as homeopathy does not need to be metabolized by the cytochrome P450 pathway in the liver. It is also very inexpensive and very deep acting as an energetic medicine. So some of my favorite constitutional remedies to keep on hand are Arnica for pain of any kind, Coffea cruda to antidote one too many lattes or too much coffee, Nux vomica for food poisoning, and Ignatia for grief. Belladonna and Gelsemium are also excellent for colds and stuffy noses. The therapeutic remedies that I recommend that can be purchased in stores are Oscillococinum for colds and flus, Chamomilla for teething babies, Optique for eye strain and long hours in front of the computer. And the two brands that I currently use in practice are Undevice Royal and Boyron. The uses of homeopathy is endless and you could literally have a dispensary at home as a biohacker or just as an everyday person. So I believe we have a special gift for our viewers. We do actually. We have a homeopathic giveaway from Boyron Canada. You can find all the details on our Instagram page. Awesome, thanks for joining us on today's episode. We'd love to hear about your biohacking experiences. Why don't you leave us some comments below and hit that like button. Don't forget to stay tuned for our next episode. Please follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel Biohacked by clicking below.